distinguished guests, please welcome President and Chief Executive Officer of the Detroit Regional Chamber, Sandy Barua. God, you guys look great. Like, it's like you went shopping before you came up to the island. Awesome. All right, welcome everyone. We are so excited to see you. We're so excited that we're all together yet again. And it's normal, <laughs> right? We're back to normal and it's, it's, it just feels great, but we're honored to have you with us. We know you have so many demands on your time. You're all leaders, you're all incredibly busy. So thank you so much. And from the Chamber team, from our heart, we want to thank you for being here and your support of the Detroit Regional Chamber. You know, we understand very, very clearly that the Mackinac Policy Conference is a statewide asset. And we treat it as such. We treat it as we are stewards of this incredible statewide asset because across the country, they look to us, they look to this event, they frankly look to this room and say, why can't we do this in our state. And frankly, if we hadn't had a history that goes back decades, we couldn't do it. So we're all incredibly fortunate. And one of the reasons why we're incredibly fortunate, the reason why you take the planes, trains, the automobiles, the ferries, and however else you take you know, to get up here, because let's face it, we love Mackinac Island, but one of the reasons why we love it is that it's inconveniently located for everybody equally, no matter where you live in Michigan, which is why we keep doing it here. But one of the reasons why you make that trek is because civility still lives here. No matter what your viewpoint is, you are welcome here and how we treat each other, how we talk to each other, and most importantly, how we listen to each other is something that we all value. And this is why Michigan works, is because of conversations and experiences like this. And it wouldn't be possible, of course, without our amazing sponsors. Leading us off, as always, is our good friend, Dan Lepp, and the great team at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, who has been such an amazing, steadfast supporter of not just the Mackinac Policy Conference, but the Detroit Regional Chamber. Thank you to our friends at Blue Cross. <laughs> and our Ruby sponsors, they keep growing. My sincere thanks to amazing partners like Huntington Bank, Piston Sports and Entertainment, the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation, and the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. Thank you to our Ruby sponsors. <laughs> and our platinum sponsors keep growing too, and we're so gratified by this. Consumers Energy, Crane Communication, Dow, General Motors, the Grand Hotel, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, Michigan Health and Hospital Association, PNC Bank, the Rocket Companies, Strategic Staffing Solutions, and our partner, UPS. Thank you to our platinum sponsors. <laughs> and of course, we have incredible partners that make this all happen. And I want to point out two of them, of course, it would not be the Mackinac Policy Conference if we weren't here at the beautiful and majestic Grand Hotel. It looks better and better every year. Thank you to the Grand Hotel for their amazing partnership and providing all of this for all of us. And our longstanding partnership over a decade now with Detroit Public Television, with our friend Zoe Clark, now at the anchor desk in the parlor, who ensures that all of the activities on this stage and in so many of the sessions that take place elsewhere in this hotel are streamed and available free of charge to anyone, not just in Michigan, but across the planet. And we have developed a global viewership for this event. And what a lineup of speakers we have to put on that streaming service. From the chief executives of our state and our signature city, to Liz Cheney in one of her first major addresses since departing the Congress, and her work on the January 6th Commission, to high-profile business leaders, including our own Bill Ford, Bank of America's Brian Moynihan, and to the multi-talented Mark Cuban, and the internationally renowned journalist from CNN, Fareed Zakaria. I'm also pleased to welcome back Camille Lloyd of this Gallup Center on Black Voices, 
The Detroit Regional Chamber has been incredibly proud to be a partner with Gallup in bringing the work of the Center on Black Voices to Detroit and the Detroit area. This is a deep dive of the lived experience of black Americans in the Detroit area and provides a new level of insight previously unavailable to policymakers and program delivery entities about how our black neighbors are doing. So please join Camille Lloyd tomorrow at 10 o'clock right here in this room for the unveiling of this very unique survey. Also tomorrow, following the governor's keynote address, please join the, uh, the Detroit Regional Chamber PAC for a moderated discussion with Michigan's legislative leadership. We're pleased to have our friend, Guy Gordon of WJR Radio, moderating the discussion with our quadrant leaders. And of course, it is the Mackinac Policy Conference, so please rest assured that the, the moderated discussion will be followed by cocktails. A separate ticket is required, and operators are indeed standing by. Now, as always, what's said in this room is not supposed to stay here. This is a conversation for the entire state, which is why we partner with Detroit Public Television, which is why we have over 130 working media up here on the island covering the conference, let alone the media that is watching through the live feed. So this conversation needs to be shared. So please do your part by firing up those social media machines that you brought with you and use the hashtag MPC23 and tag Detroit Chamber to make sure that your observations, your thoughts, they might be questions like going, well, I can't believe someone said this, or this is really interesting, or I have a different idea. Share your thoughts and share your, share your pictures uh, through these social media channels. And if you haven't downloaded the app, please download the app. Our program is subject to change, and this year in particular has been particularly fluid. With the debt ceiling conversations occurring in Washington, our congressional delegation understandably had to cancel out. So we have adjusted start times, we've moved things around, and things are kind of constantly fluid. So that's a long-winded way of saying, you know, the little books that you have that you keep in your name tags, you know, the little printed book with all the pages, it's already outdated because it was printed a week and a half ago. So please, please, please download uh, the app. And we've also expanded the app's functionality. So number one, many of you have taken a poll, a survey that we have put, and you can see some of the results here. And we mirrored some of these questions that we're asking you, our Mackinac policy attendants, attendees, some of the same questions that we're asking our statewide audience through our partnership with the Glenn Gariff Group on the statewide polling that we do at the Chamber. And I think some of these are interesting. So this is of, this is of all of you, of attendees. Is business a force for good? Well, 12% of you apparently think no, which is interesting. You know, one, this is a business conference hosted by you know, the, one of the state's largest business entities. But that's, I find that really interesting. So that's what this conversation is about. I mean, we're not going to go beat them up in the parking lot. Let's find those 12%, and we want, we want to hear those views. You know, are, are we competing for EV? Should we be serious about that? You know, seriously, you know, 90% say yes. And does business have a role to speak out on social issues? A really strong 93%, and that's awesome, because you may have seen in the news there are some other states that are challenging businesses that speak out on issues that they feel that they need to speak out on. The other way that we've expanded the app is that for the first time, we're going to have some designated sessions where you will be able to send the moderator your suggested questions. So we're going to do that through the app. Uh, so please look for those functionalities. And again, please, please, please download the app. And I want to thank our chair, Matt Elliott, and his wife and partner in this endeavor, Anne, for coming up with this incredibly terrific theme that we have the power of Anne. And its power is in its simplicity. As a community, as a state, even on the global stage, we are all stronger when we work together, when we work in partnership. And Anne is about doing things together and looking for the win-win as opposed to the either-or. And you're going to hear that contrast so much during these next two and a half days. And if you haven't already sat on it, there is a pin on your seats. 
And if you believe in the power of and, please take out the pin and put it on your lapel. Uh, we'd, we'd, lo we'd love to see you all wear it and really support the power of and theme that we're going to be talking about. And during this conference, we have plenty of ands to talk about and to address. Michigan's population growth has shallowed the rest of the nation. Yes, we're growing, but if we were growing at the rate of the rest of the nation, we wouldn't be losing congressional seats. The business environment, rankings by CNBC and frankly other organizations, indicate that Michigan's business ranking is falling, not growing. That's a problem. From this stage, we have frequently talked about educational attainment and how that is critical to Michigan's future. And not only are we seeing a shallowing in our educational attainment compared to other peer cities and regions and states, we see that the knowledge workers that have been growing at 35% across the nation have been flat here in Michigan. So when we look at just education alone, and we're going to talk about a whole bunch of different issues while we're up here together. But education is one that really kind of cuts. 37 of the top 50 jobs in Michigan today require a formal four-year degree. Now, I just want to put the caveat, college is not the path for everybody. But if 37 of the top 50 jobs in Michigan today require a college degree, what does that mean for tomorrow? And when we think about the complexity of the 21st century, what do, what do we need? What do our businesses need and what do we need as individuals? You know, there's the five C's that are in, growing increasingly in, uh, in awareness in terms of what these needs are for our society. Critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, and the one that I'm glad that we're finally adding is citizenship. So it's going to take a lot of ands to address these and the other issues and either or thinking isn't going to get us there. And the reason either or thinking works is because, frankly, it's good for some businesses. Right? We know that there is a business model out there in various industries that profit from separating, dividing, and pushing people into their corners. Frankly, I spent most of my life in national politics, and I know that negative ads work. There's a reason why you see them over and over and over again during election cycle. But fortunately, there are no negative ads up here this week. We are assembled here to talk about the power of and, so let's enjoy ourselves, and let's solve some vexing Michigan issues. Thank you all for being here. Please welcome President of Bank of America, Michigan, and chair of the 2023 Mackinac Policy Conference, Matt Elliott. Thank you. Nice to have my B of A cheering section here today. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Well, I'd like to add my welcome to the 2023 Mackinac Policy Conference and the potential of the power of AND. I also wanna thank the chamber staff and the staff of the Grand Hotel uh, Ann and I have had a chance to see what it's like to really put on this conference, and it's like launching a missile. It's really complex, and they do an incredible job. So thank you for all that hard work. I also want to thank our sponsors, without whom we couldn't fund all this. It, it take, does take a lot to get this video board, for example, onto an island using horses. <laughs> I also want to thank you all for embracing already the power of Anne. And I feel like we're going to have a lot of fun with this over the next few days and, may, and hopefully even beyond. And that's one of the things that we really want to do with this year's conference is take it beyond just this conversation and expand it out. Last but not least, I'd like to thank uh, our chairman, our current board chairman, uh, Arne Tellum, for his leadership of the chamber uh, for the past year and also for putting on an incredible outing yesterday. Now, Iron took complete credit for the weather. So we all have Arne to thank for paying the extra premium for the good weather this week. So Arne, thank you very much. So the goal of this conference is to explore the power of AND and hopefully build a clear framework that will align us towards a winning future for the state of Michigan. 
And if you take only one thing away from the next few days, remember this, and wins. Because only by using the power of and can you do things that at first blush might not seem possible together. We can do sustainability and we can grow the economy. Our companies can have profits and have purpose. We can be fiscally responsible and make investments in the future. So that is what the power of and is all about. Easy to say, sometimes not as easy to do. So let's start with a quick or a, a, a sort of a quick discussion of what we mean by the power of and. Through experience, we know and conversations are those that come from multiple points of view, whereas or conversations look just like these slides. You're left, you're right, you're Democrat, Republican, you're an EV, you're driving an EV, or you're driving an ICE vehicle, and there's no middle ground. It's one or the other. Or, my favorite, <laughs> you're a Spartan or you're a Wolverine, right? All right, we're going to settle it with a go green. I'm the chairman. <laughs> and we'll just choose not to root against Michigan. That's our and. We'll call it good. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Well, even though or can be simple or easy, the problem with it is that there's only two options. There's a winner, and there's a loser. So the conversation stops. And there's no discussion in between, right? There's no growth. There's no synergy. And there's no win-win. That's how you spot an and conversation, is that you have a conversation between people usually who have different points of view. They have different takes on things. They may have a different context. But together, you land in a spot that's better than where you started. That's an and, and, that's an and discussion. So that requires a couple of things. And along the way here, I'm going to give you a few tips that we think will make your experience a little bit better. I'll also talk a little bit more about this alignment reference that I made earlier, and I'll give you a few uh, elements that we have built into the conference structure that I think you'll find helpful as well. OK, first things first. And if you're really going to have this kind of a conversation that might have a little bit of tension to it, it requires us to listen. Listen to understand rather than to, be, you know, and, and rather than to uh, get your point across. One of the ways I've thought about this and expressed it is that we want to shift the conversation from being right to getting it right. And that requires us to, to listen together, OK? Now, um, let's turn our attention to the state of Michigan, right? This we're all here to try to drive a better future for the state of Michigan. Now, we know that Michigan has tremendous challenges. We talk about them a lot on stage at the Mackinac Policy Conference. But I think the more interesting thing is that we have incredible opportunity. It's right in front of us. And we've had some success in recent years taking advantage of, those, of our opportunities. But as you're going to hear in the next few days, we can do better. And we all know we can do better, and that's why we're all here. But what holds us back? Well, in my opinion, it's two things. One is culture, and the other is alignment. We have a culture that too often emphasizes or thinking over and thinking. And so what we do is we focus on our piece of the pie, not realizing we'd all be better off if we grew that pie. And as a result of focusing on our piece of the pie, our systems, our organizations, our institutions tend to align themselves towards either or choices. We don't do a good enough job of creating win-wins for those that we serve. So I've got a visual I want to show you that I think does a really good job of explaining this disconnect and how it can be solved. This is not a theoretical discussion. This actually happens. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, meet the person on the path. Raise your hand if you've seen this before. Yeah, there's a few people who get it. I love that. OK, this uh, visual comes courtesy of my friends at Sevilla, which is a Detroit-based design consultancy that uses and thinking to drive win-win outcomes. Now, their primary client is usually the people who build that brick path. They're working for the institution. And we all know, for those of us who work in institutions, how hard it is to build a system that we think is going to serve a user. But how often have we ended up, instead of building a brick path, uh, had our client or our user use the dirt path, right? So how does, how does Sevilla do this alignment? It's very simple. They start with the user, and they start with that user's experience. By understanding that experience, their context, where they're coming from, then they, then they help the institution design a better path. 
and we create a win for the user and a win for the institution. There are lots of examples of how we can use this sort of thinking to drive our state forward, only if we remember by starting with the power of and and the person on the path. And we'll talk a lot more about this as we go along, and we're also gonna have a group of incredible speakers that will lift these concepts up as we go through the week. Okay, four more things I wanna share with you that I think are gonna be a little bit unique to this year's conference. The first is data and feedback. In several sessions, we're gonna level set with fact. So we start the key conversations from a similar set of facts, a similar starting place. And along the way, you're gonna have opportunities to share your voice via Twitter and live polling. The next is what I think of as proximity and context. If you really wanna understand someone, to have an and conversation, data is not enough. You have to understand where that person is coming from. And thinking is powered by diverse points of view among people who respect and understand each other. So the tip is along, along the way when you're having a conversation with someone new, which happens all the time at Mackinac, get a little bit more about their story. What makes them tick? One of my personal favorites is, where'd you go to high school? By the way, DeWitt High School, class of 85. The third thing that I think is really important is engagement, and this is Mackinac's superpower. This is the opportunity for us to bounce ideas off each other and come up with a better solution than an either or. But here's one ask. As you're having those conversations with people, make sure that we remember the person on the path and speak for the people who aren't in the room with us. Those are the people that ultimately we have to serve and drive a better future for, so speak for the person who's not here with you. And then the last one, and as a banker, this might be my favorite. This is action and measurement. Uh, there's a group of B of A'ers here, and they all know that we never leave a meeting or a call that I lead without what? Homework. homework. We never leave a meeting without homework. <laughs> Neither will any of you. So at the end of every session, we're gonna ask for two things. Number one, a micro action, something tangible that we can all do that will start to change the conversation and change the narrative. Too often, we leave here on Friday with you know, a box of fudge, but not, not much that's all that tangible. We're gonna to try to change that. The second thing is a metric. Uh, how do we know that we're staying on track? And so what we'll do is we will package those metrics and package those micro actions, and that will form the framework, at least the scaffolding of, of the framework that we'll take home with us. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing how that evolves. Okay. Two things, number one, to drive all this forward, to use the power of and requires us to drive change, and change requires leadership. The more courageous, the better. And I can't think of a better room of courageous leaders to be in than this one. So I wanna thank you for your engagement. Thank you for walking the path with us this week. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I also wanna thank a special person, my wife, Anne, who's sitting here in the front row, and who has walked a path with me. <laughs> who has walked a path with me for 30 plus years and hopefully a few more. We'll see how this goes over the weekend. <laughs> but Annie. Uh, <laughs> she thinks I'm doing okay, you know? But uh, she has been, and Aunt, uh, Sandy said it right, th this has been a team effort the whole way, and it's been a better for it, and I wanna thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you, Annie. Okay, well, it's time to get our conversation going, and I can't think of a better leader to introduce to get that, get that conversation started than the leader of our state. So I'd like to bring to the stage the 49th governor of the state of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. 